Morning, First Love family. Happy to be here. Happy to be here. You know, this has turned out to be such a... You know, I don't really like to use the word fun, but man, it's fun. Because this gives me an opportunity to dig into the word more and, um, and, and, and pray that the Lord would bring into my brain stuff that's going to serve you and me and me. But I just, I just love this. I really do. I don't ever want to stop. So we're in the Old Testament still. We're going to be in Proverbs chapter 4, starting in verse ooh, 20. Starting in verse 20. Let's go there right now. Uh, Proverbs 4.20. And we're going to go through 27. He says, uh, My son, and this is more than likely Solomon, um, and we did a whole bunch of stuff in, in his other book, my brainlessness is attacking right now. Um, so Solomon. Solomon was a character, man. Wisest man in the world, richest man in the world, and biggest backslider in the world. So he says this. He says, my son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Ecclesiastes. Thank you. Uh, Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. <clears throat> for they are life <clears throat> to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth, and put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead, and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the, pa uh, the path of your feet. That's like walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise for the days of evil, right? So uh, ponder the path of your feet, and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or the left and remove your foot from evil. You know, I made the comment before that Jesus is the only person in the world who, who, who never had to say I'm sorry or never had to say I wish I hadn't have said it like that or, or I wish I hadn't have turned to the right and instead turned to the left or gone straight ahead because he never made a mistake. He never had a misjudgment. He never uh, misspoke. He just never misspoke. And so that's never going to be our case, unfortunately, right? Until we get to heaven. And at that point, the gaze of Jesus upon our countenance is going to be so purifying. Sorry, so purifying that there will never be a sin committed by us again. So he goes, darn it. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Well, since he's speaking under the inspiration of God here, we've got to assume that what God is saying to us is, listen up, listen up, hear what I'm saying to you. Do not let my sayings depart from your eyes. Wait a minute. He says, he says give attention to me, incline your ear to my sayings, but then he says, do not let them depart from your eyes. I, I, I don't know, I think that you know, we need to be seeing as well as hearing. You know, how many of you are screenplay writers? I write screenplays in my head all the time about what's going on in my life, about what's going on in her life, about what's going on in his life, and I can see them. And if I visualize the scriptures as I'm reading them, and he's talking probably about reading scriptures because he says, do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Why? And he answers that, and he says, For they are life to those who find them, and health to all their flesh. So if he says they are, uh, they are life to those who find them, that uh, it, it, it intimates to me that there is some searching going on. We don't find something unless we're looking for it. Maybe we might stumble onto something like the pearl of great price, but they are life to those who find them. That, that means, and when he says, give attention to my words, incline your ear to my sayings, do not let them depart from your eyes. Well, that would be the person who's searching, right? That would be the person who's looking for something. For they are life to those who find them, and health to all their flesh. You know, in this world that we're in today, there's a lot of sickness, a lot of cancer. I just, I met with a kid Sunday in the hospital. He's 20 years old. He's had cancer since he was 15. 
He's had the kind of cancer that it strikes in one place and just goes away. And then it strikes in someplace else and just goes away. And finally, it hit his entire body at one time and riddled every single part of his body, every organ, his bones, his marrow, with, with tumors and cancer. And I went to see him Sunday. And I prayed with him, and he was so beautiful, man. So beautiful. And I, I put my hand on him, and he took his other hand, and he laid it on my arm, and he squeezed me. And we both started crying, and we started praying, and it was so rad. So I went the next Monday morning. I went to my mom's to visit her. She's infirm. And um, then I was going to go back to the hospital and see him again. And my friend, who's the daughter of my friend, was the fiancé to this young man. And he texted me and he said, um, he died this morning. And I was like, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, because I knew that from that moment on, he was dancing in front of the throne of God, having eye contact with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and it's beautiful. Don't ever be afraid to die. If you're saved, it's the beginning of real life. It's the beginning of perfect life, eternal life. What am I going to do for eternity, Pastor Pete? Well, I don't know, but it's going to be good. I think it's going to be really, really, really good. God promises it's going to be really, really, really good. Anyway, on with this. Keep them in the midst of your heart for their life to those who find them and health to other flesh. Keep your heart with diligence. And again, that reflects that statement, walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Because diligence and vigilance are very closely related. And I've always told you the story about riding around in San Pedro and finding this old wrecking yard with this broke down, half dead pit bull guarding the chain link fence. And that dog would lay there looking like he could never get up, but if you approach that gate, oh, well, that dog came alive. This guy had one eye, one ear, tail torn apart, crippled, but he was on point, man. He was on point. And uh, I'd take him a hamburger. I get me a hamburger, get him a hamburger, and he'd be all happy and wagging his tail. And how I, get, I could actually feed him the hamburger through the fence. When that hamburger was gone, the mean dog was back. And that's where I learned my definition, definition of vigilance. This dog was not going to let anything get by him. And that's how we need to be. That diligence and vigilance are, are sisters. So keep your heart with all diligence. From out of it spring the issues of life. See, there, there's a, a thing that happens, man. When God pours into us the issues of life into our heart, then we are capable of like a river, you know, a, a standing pool of water will become stagnant and, and riddled, riddled with moss and, and algae if there isn't water coming in and water going out. And it's the same with our hearts. If water's just coming in and we're not letting it go out, we're not sharing what we've learned, we're not sharing the love of Jesus Christ, that water will become algae-ridden and stagnant. And so, uh, for out of its spring, the issues of life, put away from you a deceitful mouth. Well, that's just a no-brainer. You're not going to hear a preacher standing up in the pulpit cussing a blue streak. You know, and, and uh, do I never cuss? Well, I've told this story, I've told most of my stories before, uh, you know, 25 years in the pulpit, you kind of run out of stories. But um, smashing my uh, chin in, in the coffee table in the middle of the night, sneaking into the kitchen to steal a chocolate chip cookie that I was denied earlier because of my diabetes. Um, yeah, F-bomb city, man. It, for sure, I'm in pain. I'm like, my shin's bleeding. Fortunately, we have hardwood floors and not carpet. But anyway, uh, out of it springs issues like put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you. And if you're just cussing to impress somebody, it, it doesn't. It just shows that, you know, when you, when, you, when you see a movie and there's a lot of profanity, you read a book, there's a lot of profanity, you're thinking, wow, the, the person who wrote this screenplay or the person who authored this novel really doesn't have much of a, of a vocabulary or an imagination. If they've got to resort to the shock value of throwing a burst of filth, 
Like if you read either of my books, there's no profanity, there's no sex. A little bit of violence and a lot of drugs, but um, you know, you don't have to have those things to sound cool. You know, I used to be in an NA meeting every afternoon at four o'clock, and this guy, this friend, I love this guy, but I counted him dropping the F-bomb 70 times in a five minute share. I'm like, dude, what, why? He toned it down. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you. Let your, here's a really good one, man. Let your eyes look straight ahead. That will save us a lot of problems, I tell you what. And put your eyelids to look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet. Should I be going over here? Maybe not. Should I be going over there? Absolutely, yes. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. That means don't go hither, tither, like without thinking about where you're going, just wandering aimlessly. Because when you wander aimlessly without a purposeful destination, you're probably going to wander into problems. Do not turn to the right or to the left. That means just walk straight ahead to your goal. What is your goal? Serving Jesus Christ. Don't walk any other direction. Don't walk any other direction. It says remove your foot from evil. It's not rocket science, really, is it? Isn't it just a matter of, you know, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Well, Pastor Peter, you're not in the New Testament with Jesus. You're, you're in the Old Testament with Solomon. And, and so, you know, what's that got to do with if I love Jesus, I'll keep his commandments? Well, in Hebrews, Jesus says, in the volume of the book, it was written of me to do your will, O God. So there's nothing in the book that isn't Jesus' commandment. The commandments in Leviticus, the Ten Commandments that God gave to Moses, those Jesus was in the construction, the writing, the, the, the authorship of every one of those. So don't think that just because it's in the Old Testament, it doesn't apply to you as a New Testament Christian. Oh, it does. It certainly does. Anyway, I love your guts. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And a million more thank yous and infinite thank yous. Because... New life is a big deal. And I don't even think that we are capable of realizing how big of a deal it is until we see your face. Until suddenly we're leaving the earth behind. We're flying into the heavens. Probably naked. But Lord, it will be a different kind of nudity. It will be a pure and holy nudity. There will be no lust. There will be no desire. There will be no... Nothing, it will just be organic and natural and holy and beautiful. And that will be a change in and of itself. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love you guys. Have a wonderful day. See you tomorrow. I was a dead man walking until you left this bed. Man walking back to life. This is First Love Church. Welcome home.